ProPublica is out with new bombshell reporting, supposedly, that exposes the Supreme Court's corruption, according to them, detailing Justice Clarence Thomas's 20-year-long relationship with billionaire Republican donor Harlan Crow. The report alleges that Thomas was treated to luxury vacations with the help of Crow, including traveling on his yacht, staying at his private resort, and using his private jet. Now, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is calling for Justice Thomas to be impeached, saying this is beyond party or partisanship. This degree of corruption is shocking, almost cartoonish. Thomas must be impeached, barring some dramatic change. This is what the Roberts Court will be known for, rank corruption, erosion of democracy, and the stripping of human rights. Um, I read this story. I don't think it's a bombshell at all. I think it's actually like a total nothing burger. Um, he has a wealthy friend that they've gone on trips with. Like, look, if you think... If, if you think Clarence Thomas is, 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 is his views come because he's like influenced by concern, like his, his views are his views. You might think they're wrong, right. but he clearly deeply holds them. And he is married to a woman, Ginny Thomas, who is a conservative activist. He's married, like, there's no way getting around the conflict of interest. His wife right. is a very influential conservative activist. So I don't, the, the Supreme Court obviously doesn't have the, the same kind of like rules about these kinds of things that other branches of government have. Maybe you think that's bad. I, I don't see any, may, may, if, if he if violated some actual rule, then fine, make that case. But I don't, I don't, I don't understand the like the, they're making this out to be very nefarious. Like, yeah. just disagree with him if you disagree with him. But he's not. He has the. He has sincerely held conservative views on these issues. It's not like, oh, he he got taken on this yacht by this rich friend and like he's changing his mind about a case. I don't believe that. Yeah, I I, I tend to agree with you here. I, I mean, we know Clarence Thomas has been Clarence Thomas since the '80s. He's mm -hmm. always had these views, uh, these conservative views, since his experience in law school, according to him when he started uh, researching Thomas Sowell. Uh, so that's, I don't think that this is necessarily the bombshell that it's being made out to be. Um, I do think there are other areas where Thomas should recuse himself from certain cases, and perhaps there could be ethical violations. The other thing is I think we need to solidify what is allowed in the Supreme Court. I think that, that some of that is kind of amorphous and, that, and that's part of the problem and nebulous. But it, this particular thing, he has wealthy friends. I need to make some of those friends, for real. Like, somebody <laughs> needs to put me on a private jet and, and take me to yeah, his private it resort. Sounds, it sounds like some, some nice vacations. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't ha know how you disentangle. Obviously, Ginny Thomas, his wife, was a conservative activist. Um, you know, we, we've seen her text messages that be made that were made public as a result of some January 6th related stuff. Um, you know, that she was, I, I think, engaging. I don't remember exactly what she texted or said, but was uh, exploring some of the uh, stop the steal type rhetoric or ideas or theories. Um, I understand, obviously, why people would be concerned about that behavior being so proximal to a, a Supreme Court justice. And I, I can understand why you would think he should recuse himself then, maybe for specifically for election-related cases. But so so by comparison, the fact that he went on, like, yeah. he goes on trips with, like, a longtime family friend is not is not so... Obviously, if that yeah. guy specifically had, like, a, like a real estate case or something that right. came before the Supreme Court, and he... And, Thomas didn't recuse himself, that would be, yes, that would be a huge scandal. Still, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. The justices get to decide which cases they recuse themselves from. There's no, like, standard for this kind of thing. The Supreme Court kind of just operates under the rules that the nine of them come up with. Yeah, and I think that's, that's problematic. But that would be bad. <laughs> you know, I think they, yeah. that we need to iron out the rules for the Supreme Court and realize that it's just not, hey, you get to stay here for life and do what you want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even with, with some of the things that we saw um, with Justice Alito and, and some of the information that he may or may not have been spreading at, at public events or, or, you know, even private events hmm. uh, about upcoming cases. There, there needs to be some rules put on this Supreme Court that are clear, that the American people are privy to, so we know that there are some constraints to the Supreme and Court. And AOC's one to talk. She's facing a, she, she faced an ethics investigation uh, relating to that dress she wore at the, at the, what was it, the Met Gala um, uh, last year, I think, the Eat the Rich dress. Yeah, there yeah. was some, uh, she faced some kind, whether that was a gift. Oh, also, the, maybe not the dress itself, but the tickets for the event, I believe. We talked, Brianna and I talked about it on the show, or maybe it was me and Bacha. She, 
there was a question of whether she paid back the people who helped do like her wardrobe, hair, and makeup. Um, there was a question of whether she was the guest of a of Anna Wintour, who is like on is is with Vogue. She was a guest of Vogue, but like, could she do that? It was a whole kind of congressional ethics thing where she did admit some wrongdoing and like, like I don't think it's a big deal or whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I I I think you know if you have friends who happen to be wealthy and they take you on vacations mm -hmm. and let you fly on their private jets, I I don't think that that like you said, yeah. unless there's some sort of yeah. even even tangential connection there i think you can you can certainly right. make a complaint but and he should he should definitely recuse himself if a case specifically involving this person's right. like like land or property or finance it came up right. but the, I, I think what propublica is saying here is that it's just it's it's unethical or it's corrupt because this person is a is a supporter and a donor to conservative causes yeah, like they're just like ideologically they're just ideologically Simpatico in that way. Yeah, I, I mean, how how long? I mean, it says that they have this relationship for twenty years, but how long yeah. have they been friends? Like, yeah. you know, I mean, you can't tell people to abandon their friends just because they get a new position. Even though, you know, I'm abandoning a lot of my friends now that I'm in this seat yeah. here on Rising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm way too big for them. Now that you're making the big bucks. Exactly. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I, I think that you know. I, I generally, you know, politically, mm -hmm. generally I'm on the same side as AOC. I generally agree with her. Uh, this one, I, I don't think that this is the hill to die on if you want to get rid of Clarence Thomas. I think there are other issues, like you said, with, with Ginny Thomas and her connection to January 6th that should be explored more and see if he's compromised. I remember one of those cases, those uh, election-related cases, it was eight to one, and he was the one dissenting vote. And it was like even, you know, Gorsuch and uh, ACB and— um, Kavanaugh, they were like, yeah, this is flimsy. Mm -hmm. But he was the one that, uh, you know. Well, I think he said, uh, if you're referring to the one I'm thinking, right, didn't he say, I think both him and Alito would have heard a case. Not necessarily that they would have, but they, they, would, they didn't dismiss it out of hand the way most of the other justices, including, to, as you point out, the right. other conservative justices, which shows that there is, um, you know, I think uh, liberals treat the conservative justices, and maybe conservatives treat the liberal justices this way as well, as like some kind of monolith. But there's, right. there are cases where, where there, uh, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh disagree on a lot of stuff. Um, uh, you know, sometimes it's like some, a lot of cases are just nine zero, right? They all right, end up, yeah, yeah. they all end up agreeing. I mean, you have to have a strong case, and yeah. you know, if it's if there, if your legal rationale is flimsy, I mean, these guys have a judicial philosophy, but there are some things that just aren't good. <laughs> you didn't bring a strong case, and you're gonna get you're gonna get wiped out in the Supreme Court. I remember there was a case with uh, a, a media mogul, an African American media mogul, uh, who owns the Grio. And he brought a case and got beaten 9 0. And everybody said, this that is feels what's bad. Yeah, it's what's going to happen. And it's exactly what happened. So he couldn't get some of the liberal justices on his side because it wasn't a strong case. My favorite is when that happens to the federal government, when they lose the 9 0 case. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I, I like when the federal government is humiliated. All right, that does it for us. More rising right after this.